My name is Zane Hodgkins, and I'm a four-year senior from Tampa, Florida. Sixteen of the 17 warmest years ever recorded have occurred since 2001. The ocean's acidity has risen 30% since the Industrial Revolution. According to the world's leading climate scientists, there is only 12 years for global warming to be kept to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Going beyond this by even half a degree will significantly worsen the risk of droughts, floods, extreme heat, and poverty for hundreds of millions of people. With this knowledge, I believe it is important to have a discussion about what we can do, how to survive the coming apocalypse. After countless hours of watching Survivor Man as a kid and playing Minecraft in at least half my classes, I'm pretty much an expert. So step one is to build a bunker. Nine out of 10 dentists agree that a bunker is the best end of the world shelter. Your bunker should be close enough to your house that you can easily get to it. It's important to keep the location of your secret bunker a secret. Step two is to prepare the essentials. First is obviously food. Um, most people would recommend canned foods or things like M MREs as they have a long shelf life. But it's the end of the world, so there's really no one to judge, so we can just stock up on the essentials. Next is obviously water. Um, if you build a well, you have unlimited water, and if you pair it with a filtration system, uh, you ensure your safety. But this is Suffield, so you can just buy a bunch of boss water instead. <laughs> Finally, it is important to remember you can be trapped in this bunker for a long time. So bring some of your favorite things. Here are some of mine. <laughs> now the last step, and arguably most important, is to figure out who you're going to trust to survive with you. The reality is I put this part in just to show pictures of my friends, but I am saving them from the end of the world, so they can't really be that. Now, Belgium. Belgium can offer us some defense and safety, and Bobby can be there. <laughs> to be honest, I don't really have anything heartfelt to say, I just think they're funny. Um, and that's me on my first day here, so how far we've come. <laughs> Um, the reality is the world probably won't end, or let's hope not. We have survived 2012 and the end of the Mayan calendar. Some of us were even around through Y2K, yet here we are, and I still have to give this speech. I have faith that humanity will endure and overcome anything thrown at us, but it is said that every day the world ends for someone, and this is really true. It is the stark reality all people must face. If I may give you some advice, live every day to its fullest, and find the people you would bring into your bunker. I will leave you with the immortal words of Master Ugwe. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Thank you. Hello, my name is Claire Maya Schelling. I'm a two-year senior from Frankfurt, Germany. After my sister, two years ago, held her chapel speech and disclosed her wrongdoings about a party that went totally wrong, I guess it runs my family to confess this. <laughs> I got suspended from my German high school for three days. You can judge for yourself whether the punishment was appropriate for the crime. I have never told this story to anyone except my close friends, and Suffield doesn't know about this. <laughs> I'm probably shooting myself in both feet for telling this story, so please, Mr. Lynch, don't have a talk with me after this. This incident took place in winter of ninth grade. I was part of a four-member group. We called ourselves The Gang. I'm aware by now that this name was very embarrassing, but as you know, freshmen have a mind of their own. Our gang had a tradition to bake a cake if one of us had their birthday. When Lucas, the gang member, had his birthday, I had the brilliant idea to bake a prank cake. So moving on, my friends came to my house and we had a blast adding weird ingredients that usually don't belong into a typical chocolate cake, such as Tabasco, mustard, sausage water, ketchup, and olives. <laughs> the most creative ingredients was when I came up with the idea to add dog food, making it seem like a yummy chocolate chip cake. <laughs> On the next day, I brought the cake to school. During lunch, we prepared a little birthday ceremony where we had candles and sang for him. Finally came the bite. As soon as Lucas took a bite of this cake, he immediately knew this wasn't an average cake and spit it out. 
But as you know, when, whenever someone has free cake to offer, a horde of people comes running at you to get a piece. Turned out, some guy had taken a piece of the cake and threw up after he, he found out there was dog food inside. He immediately went to the school nurse because he was in shock. But none of us who made the cake found out about this until the headmaster took us out of our classes and had a talk with us. She yelled at us and accused us of poisoning other students because we could have caused an anaphylactic shock. Yet, you have to understand, the cake was only meant for Lucas. We were called to the headmaster's office four times and had to repeat our story another six times, explaining in detail what happened and who knew about this. The school went so far in calling a class meeting where all our teachers gathered to discuss our punishment. Some wanted to expel us, others wanted to suspend us for a long period of time. As a surprise to me, my parents weren't that mad, maybe because everything is seen a little bit more relaxed in Germany, but also they knew that I had deep regrets, especially since my disciplinary record up until the incident was unblemished. My friends and I were first-time offenders. <laughs> on the next day, we found out that we were suspended for three days, but I had to come to school and work on a presentation. This was one of the most severe punishments ever given to students at my school at that time. In my opinion, the punishment was exaggerated. I agree that we should have been more cautious about who took a piece of the cake, but our intentions weren't to harm others. Furthermore, I've heard worse stories of what can mean a cake. So, judge for yourself about the punishment. And the moral of the story, don't bring a cake containing dog food to school. Hi, I'm Haley Williams, and I'm a four-year senior from the Berkshires. And I'm Grace Reeves, a four-year senior from Bermuda. Three out of four years, we have lived across the hall from each other. Last year, we didn't, and it was the worst year of my life. We weren't always friends, though. When I first met Haley, I was slightly intimidated by how tall she was. But eventually, I realized she was the strangest and most awkward person I had ever met. And that's why I decided to keep her. When I first met Grace, I was surprised that she was from Bermuda, because I didn't know anyone actually lived there. She's... <laughs> She seems, she seems slightly different than anyone else I knew, but I rationalized this when I found out she was from Bermuda because I knew that the Bermuda Triangle made her this way. <laughs> when I asked her about this, however, she was not very amused. In all honesty, though, I was also kind of intimidated by her, but when I realized I was eight inches taller than her, I stopped worrying. When you live across the hall from someone for three years, you get to know them well, so today we are going to be ha giving you some insight into our friendship dynamic. I can tell when Haley gets out of bed due to the amount of noise she makes. My morning routine includes waking up to a big bang followed by stampede-like noises. Sophomore year, when we lived in academy together, my roommate Julie and I would hear banging noises, look at each other, and simultaneously say, Haley. I can tell when Grace gets out of bed every, for, because every morning for three years, Grace, with the worst bed head known to mankind, walks into my room around 7 a.m. silently. She then proceeds to sit on my desk, not say a single word for 10 minutes, and then ask, what are you wearing today? Usually, I don't want to talk to her this early, so I answer by shoving the weather app at her. One time, it was a cold morning, and Grace walked into my room and said, it's cold, what should I wear? And I said, I don't know, Grace, a jacket might be nice. To most of you, that might seem obvious, but to this one here, not so much. <laughs> well, Haley also has a habit of binge-watching shows, and once she gets into one, she does not see the day of light until she finishes that show. For instance, sophomore year, when I walked into Carly and Haley's room during study hall, only to find Haley bawling her eyes out. Obviously, I was concerned, so I asked her what was wrong, and Haley then replies with, Oh, nothing. I'm fine. I've just been watching the same clip from Vampire Diaries on loop because it makes me cry. Like, who does that? <laughs> Grace has a habit of being lazy. Once it gets past roughly 9.15 at night, she will make me fill up her water, pass her food, even tuck her into bed at night because she is too tired to get up, and that is why I do not enter her room past 9 p.m. anymore. On the other hand, I don't go into Haley's room during study hall because she is usually too busy or has more important things to do than hang out with me, as if there could be such a thing. This includes the occasional homework, in which I would understand. However, you would think that when staring intently at a laptop screen, she's doing actual work. However, this is not the case. 
Most of the time, she is watching Netflix, playing mini clip games, or taking BuzzFeed quizzes. But most often, it's a thrilling game of 2048 cupcakes. And if I try to distract her, I will, I will get yelled at. As you can see, Grace and I's lives are pretty chaotic, which is why there is a need for a third member, or member in our little trio, Julie Report. In a nutshell, Julie is our mother. She is the only one able to balance out Grace and I, which is why we are eternally grateful for her. Freshman year, Julie and I were paired as roommates and became great friends instantly. Obviously, I was very nervous to meet her at first, as we had only talked briefly on social media beforehand, but soon after meeting her, I realized she was super nice and genuine, and we began to do almost everything together. My relationship with Julie began slightly differently. We were not friends right away because I thought she was scary. However, we bonded over having no idea what our homework meant one night, and we've been friends ever since. I also realized that she's not actually scary, it's just that she has an RBF. <laughs> so if any of you feel scared of her, don't be. She's one of the best people in the whole world. But don't get us wrong and all, Julie is still just as weird as the rest of us, just in her own little way, but we won't expose her today. I can come to Julie with almost anything. She can bring me up when I am down, and even after she became proctor and we stopped living together, we see each other most days, and it hasn't affected our friendship. I also want to thank Julie for teaching me some discipline. Occasionally, we get into little arguments about who is right about something. I lose 99% of the time and usually end up with a bruise or two or the occasional five star, but I know it's only because she loves me. More than anything, Julie is the bestest friend we could have asked for. So thank you, Jewel Jewel 1072. Julie Vernice, we love you. Also, special thanks to Shay, Carly, and Lily for putting up with us the rest of the time. All of you have made our time here special, and we appreciate you more than you know. Thank, thank you. you. My name is Judge Burke, and I'm a three-year senior from Greenwich, Connecticut. Over the past year and a half, I've learned the true meaning and value of family. In April of 2018, I was told that my grandmother would never communicate, walk, or eat by herself again. She had suffered a stroke during brain surgery and her prognosis was not good. As of right now, she can walk up and down stairs, eat and cut food on her own, and she's an extraordinary conversationalist once again. While credit must be given to the Burke Rehabilitation Center for her progress made, the true reason she has come this far is because of my grandfather. From the day of the incident until now, my grandfather has never left my grandmother's side and assures our family daily there is nowhere else that he would rather be. Being a caregiver is no easy task especially when you are caring for someone you have known to be so strong and independent for so long. Realizing he could not bear to see my grandmother live anything besides her best life, he nearly took it upon himself to become her trainer as well as her speech therapist. Each day, he spent hours devoted to my grandmother and her recovery. Whether he was driving her to a doctor or chatting with her in the living room and constantly pestering her to sit up straight, everything he's done is for her benefit. I never thought I would be able to have a normal visit to see her ever again but he has made that possible for myself and my cousins too. I could stand here and continue to tell you all about my grandfather and the mountains he has moved for our family, but I wanna leave you with a message instead. Your parents are always going to be overprotective, too strict, and annoying. They don't do it because they don't like you, but because they're scared. They fear anything happening to any one of us, so they try to impose any and all control they have. Your siblings, while it may appear that they've had it out for you from the start, Deep down, they desperately need and want you to do well. I've learned this through watching my older sisters in their times of trouble and times of achievement. Without my two older sisters, I would still be the unmotivated student I was back home. They helped me realize where I would flourish as a student and member of a community, and I will never be able to thank them enough for the path they have led me down. I come from a very large family. I'm the 125th member of the Joyce family according to our family phone book. Yes, you heard that correctly. I have a family phone book and my family is larger than my entire grade here. For any of you wondering, that number is now up to 198. While I may not know every detail about each member of my family, I know that just as they would for me, I would do absolutely anything for any one of them. I recently spent Thanksgiving break with 40 family members and it felt the same as it did when we were younger. I don't get to see my extended family that often, but each time I do, it's like placing the final piece of a puzzle. Everything is just how it should be. Your family are the most fiercely loyal people you will ever meet, and they always have your back and be there to give you a hand. You can always count on your family, and you should never be scared to ask them for help. Remember to be thankful for your family and tell them you love them, because when you are alone in your darkest hour, they will be there with a the light. Thank you. Growing up, family gatherings never consisted of Thanksgiving dinners, Christmas parties, or Easter Day. 
Family gatherings would be for one month of the year. My entire family living across the ocean, with the exception of my parents and two siblings, had its fair share of negatives and positives. Half of my family lives in the Netherlands, and the other half is spread across Greece. While all my relatives live a 12-hour flight away, have occasional language barriers, and infrequently get a talk to because of the six and seven hour time difference, when we're all together, it's like the past 11 months never occurred. Kataklo is a small beach town in Greece that I've spent a part of my summers ever since I was six months old. It's a place I like to call home away from home. It is where I've made countless memories and many friendships. There I also get to disconnect. Because to get service there, I have to go to one of the local restaurants at the nearby port. That being said, this is the time that our phones become nothing more than a camera. It's where my Greek side of the family comes together one month a year and gets to catch up on the other 11 while making memories to hold on to until the next time. Today I wanted to share some of my favorite clips from this past summer in Kataklo, along with a couple other places in Greece that I often visit. Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bella Tomasetti, and I'm a three-year day student from Marlboro, Connecticut. Today, I'm going to be talking about a program that I participated in over the summer. I went to a university for two weeks to study different roles in the pre-medical field, and initially, I planned on doing this in order to confirm if this was something that I wanted to study in college, but it ended up being a great life experience for me. Throughout the course of the first week, my new classmates and I took notes on lectures about anatomy, surgeries, diseases, and how to treat them. Later in the week, we took a bus to a low-income area in Boston where many people were struggling with homelessness, and we set up a tent with the necessary equipment to provide these people with free medical attention. I consulted with the pati patients to ask, to ask them about their medical history and found out that most of them had actually never received any medical attention before. They were overjoyed that we were there to help them and we took their blood pressure, heart rate, drew blood samples and tested them for HIV and STDs. We gave them information on healthcare options and talked to them about their lives and struggles. After participating in this experience, I now know that I want to be in a field of work that helps people. I was able to learn about the pre-medical field and different jobs, gain knowledge from different lectures, and make lifelong friends. Here's a video that sums up my experiences during these two weeks. Thank you. 